Hello and welcome to the Foundry's Furnace Core Tutorials for Final Cut Pro. Motion Blur uses the Foundry's advanced motion estimation technology to add realistic motion blur to a sequence. Motion Blur is based on Cronus, but presents the controls in a less complex and more user-friendly way, and this allows you to quickly add optical flow-based motion blur to any clip. However, if you need precise control of the motion vectors used for adding the actual blur, or a large temporal range, i.e. a very high shutter time, you should use Kronos. Before you start this tutorial, you should download the relevant scripts and image sequences from the Foundry website. Once you have done this, we can begin. When you open the motion blur actual script, you should find the OGJet sequence. Just drop it into the timeline, I'm just going to play through this. Now, I've used Kronos to actually slow this clip down. However, I didn't actually add any motion blur. And as this is a CG sequence, it's quite crisp. So what we need to do is make it a bit more realistic. We're going to add a bit of motion blur to this to give the effective speed. So let's go back to the beginning. And we need to actually find our actual Furnace Core plugins in the Furnace Core file under Effects. And what we need to do is click on the motion blur. Just drag and drop this onto the actual script in the timeline. And if we double click on the timeline itself, uh, we should be able to the, get access to our filters tab, which is where all the controls are for actually motion blur. Now already, just by adding motion blur effect and dragging and dropping it, we've actually applied our actual motion blur to the sequence. So let's just get a render of this just to see the effect of the default settings. So when we play through the sequence, you can see we've added a lot of motion blur to the shot. However, it's a little bit too much and everything appears really, really blurry. Now we need to fix this. So let's go back to Final Cut. Now, if we just move to the timeline, to the middle of the sequence, where we can see the motion blur is taking the most effect. And what we need to do is go back to the actual Filters tab and the three main parameters of the actual motion blur node. First we have the shutter time. Now this acts like just like a real-world physical camera shutter, which gives natural motion blur. Now the shutter speed can have a dramatic impact on the appearance of moving objects. Very short shutter speeds are used to freeze fast moving objects, for example at sporting events such as Formula 1. Now very long shutter speeds are used to intentionally blur a moving object. This parameter is the equivalent shutter time of the retimed image. Now a shutter time of 1 is the equivalent to a shutter angle of 360 degrees, and a shutter time of 0 0.5 is the equivalent to 180 degrees. So if we just move this to zero, you see we have no motion blur on there. If we increase this to 3.5, you can see we have lots of actual shutter speeds on there. And there's a lot of motion blur going on. What we need to do is turn this down to actual 0 0.5. Now I know this is the correct value for this particular sequence to get the correct effect. But it's all about trial and error and seeing exactly what works for your piece of footage. We also have the shutter samples. Now this sets the number of in-between images used to create the motion blur during the shutter time. Now we can increase this to achieve a much more smoother motion blur and respectively decrease it to remove a much more jagged output. So if we just turn this to 1, a bit more of a jagged output in there, and if we increase this to say 25, which is a much more smoother motion blur effect. As you can see that had a much more bit of a, a blurring effect there. But for this particular shot, what we need to do is tune this down to 4. We also have the vector detail parameter. Now, we just this to vary the density of the vector field. The larger the vector detail is, the greater the processing time, but the more detailed your actual vectors and renders should be. For this particular sequence, we don't need to increase this. We're going to leave it at 0 0.2. So now we've changed the parameters of this. Let's get a render and see the results. So now you play through the actual render, we can see you had a much nicer effect using motion blur. So now we've added motion blur to a retimed CG sequence. Now this is just an overview of the motion blur effect. For more information on the controls, please refer back to the Furnace Core manual.